Hi, and welcome to my vlog, Sew Media, where I talk about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. Welcome to the second vlog in my series for the Sew New in June challenge run by Sew What If I Sew to celebrate a year on Instagram. Today I'm going to be sharing my final make and what I think of the pattern. So if you've seen vlog number one, you will know what pattern I chose to work with. If you haven't seen vlog number one, go over here and check it out because that's where I talk about the pattern, the sizes and all that sort of stuff. So if you have watched vlog number one, you'll know that I chose to make the Zadie jumpsuit and I have that on today. It's a lovely pattern by Paper Theory and I chose to use it because I wanted to just ease myself gently into the world of trouser making. The Paper Theory pattern's called this a relaxed, easy to wear jumpsuit which wraps around with no fastenings and it's suitable for an advanced beginner and I would agree with that. I did take my time for this particular jumpsuit. I was able to take my time and still manage to sew it over about three evenings of sewing. I do go into more detail about the pattern in my first vlog, but just briefly, it is a pattern that comes in two size bands, size 6 to 20 and 16 to 28. So it's an inclusive sized pattern, which is great. The measurements are also quite um, generous in terms of the finished measurements for each size bracket. So although I fitted into the size 12 and 14 size bracket, I actually decided to size down to size 10 based on the finished measurements. And I'm super happy with how it turned out. So as you can see from the little video of me <laughs> doing a 12, it fits beautifully. I'm really happy overall with the way it turned out. I made size 10. Finished measurements were 40 inches for the bust, 34 inches for the waist and 45 inches for the hips. So I had a fair amount of ease in each of those three places. And yes, I'm very happy with the fit. So the fabric I had to use for this pattern is 142 centimeters wide. And the pattern recommends that for 150 centimeter wide fabric, you need 2.3 meters. Now I had 2.5 meters of this fabric, but I really only just managed to squeeze out the pattern pieces. I did have to piece one pocket bag together from two different pieces of fabric and I obviously had to piece together my bias binding. I couldn't get that all in one strip, but that's fine. You're not going to see the pocket insides and I don't think you'll notice where I joined the bias binding, so it's all fine. You will notice I made the short sleeve version. I wanted to make the short sleeve version, which is a good thing because I wouldn't have had enough fabric to make the long sleeve version anyway. I received this fabric in a So Haley Jane subscription box. However, I do know that it's available online in different fabric shops. I did most recently see it over at Dragonfly Fabrics in four different colorways. So I will link that in the description box below in case you want to go and have a look for some of this fabric yourself. It is beautiful. It is a viscose. It's very light and floaty to wear. I know that the pattern suggests things like linen or a chambray for this particular jumpsuit, but I did want to try it in viscose mostly because I thought it would give me a nice sort of blousy wrap on the top whilst skimming over my curves on the bottom half. I am a pear shape, I have a 36 inch bust, a 30 inch waist and 42 inch hips so jumpsuits have always been something I'm a little bit scared of but I wanted to give it a go and so I thought this viscose might just skim my curves gently. Now viscose is a fabric that has always terrified me because it's so slippery and so tricky to cut and the first experience I had with viscose I thought I had done the right thing in terms of laying it out and cutting it carefully. I did cut it with scissors which for me was a mistake. The cutting was wonky and then it was really difficult to sew up because it moved about all over the place and it was really not a great garment in the end so I have not really worn that very much and I'm trying to work out just how I can salvage that. So I thought the So New in June challenge would be a good opportunity for me to just get on with it and give it another go. I made sure that I had the walking foot on my machine, I made sure that I had a Microtex needle, a new one, and I chose a size 70 needle for this project. And then I had fresh thread, Guterman thread. I also cut out the fabric with a rotary cutter, um, which is my preference, especially for viscose. I just put on all the pattern weights, make sure the salvages are lined up, and then just use the rotary cutter really carefully and slowly and it meant that cutting out this time was much more accurate and everything matched up when I sewed it together which is always a plus. Now that I have made this jumpsuit I really want to make another one and so I have chosen another fabric already and it's on the way from Thread Quarters and it's a beautiful Irish linen and I think that that will make a beautiful second version because now that I've tried it in the viscose I would really like to try it in a linen. 
So onto the fitting and the adjustments that I made. I ended up cutting two and a half inches off the hem of the trouser. The pattern is drafted for five foot seven inch models and I am five foot five, just under five foot five. And I really wanted to hit sort of mid calf. And so I trimmed 2.5 inches off the length. And I'm really pleased with the end result. I'm so glad I trimmed off some of that length. And I think next time I make the pattern, I'll just cut them out. 2.5 inches shorter to begin with. I'm really happy as I said with the fit of the size 10. The blouse, the top is quite blousy which is fine and the trousers have got plenty of room for movement. I was chasing around with the children at the park, I've ridden on my bike and they work beautifully so I'm really pleased that I cut a size 10. The only modification I thought I might make is um, moving the waist seam. So I don't know if you can see but the belt finishes on my waist and then the waist seam is just below the belt. Now I don't know if that's the pattern and just where the belt sits on the pattern and I don't know whether anyone else has had that experience. If you have do leave me a comment below and reassure me before I cut into my beautiful linen <laughs> but otherwise I may just move the waist up by about an inch so that that belt sits flush on the front waist piece. The back waist seam seems absolutely fine, the belt sitting on that seam no problem but I just felt it looked a little funny today with the belt sitting a little higher than the waist seam. But that may be the pattern, so do share your experience of that below. But apart from that, I made no adjustments. The ties were a perfect length for me, so I don't need to make those any longer than they already are. And I'm pretty happy with the wrap at the top. I did keep adjusting it a little bit this afternoon when I was out, so I may put a popper on this v-neck here at some point just to make sure that I'm feeling secure and comfortable in it when I am running around after the children. I was really concerned, especially with the viscose, that I would stretch out this beautiful V neckline and I really didn't want to do that. The neckline is finished with bias binding and I was really determined that I wanted to do a good job of this. So this did take me probably the longest length of time of anything in the jumpsuit. What I did was I started out by reinforcing this neckline with some seam interfacing tape which I will link below in the description box. Then I did the stay stitching on top of that interfacing tape so that it was really reinforcing that edge. Then the instruction just says to fold the bias tape over the fabric and sew that on in one go, but I really wanted to make sure that it was on securely and neatly and that nothing was stretched out. So I actually just did what I normally do with bias binding, which is to sew on the right side to the right side first, then fold it over and then top stitch it down. And I'm really pleased, you can see there's no stretching out, it sits really nicely and I can definitely recommend that interfacing tape. I may even do it on the linen just to really reinforce that edge and make sure it doesn't stretch out. It's about five minutes maybe of extra work and I think for me it was worth it in terms of making sure that the final result was one I was really pleased with. So that's my Zadie jumpsuit. It's been really fun joining in this week on Instagram with the So New in June challenge. So if you haven't yet, pop over to Instagram and check out my feed. And I've also shared a few other projects and things that I've made this week on there. So do check that out if you would like to. And so that's all from me for this week. Thank you for watching the video today. I hope that was helpful. If you've got any questions about the Zadie jumpsuit, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments below. Meantime, I'll be going to take this for a test drive this morning on my bicycle, because when I made this, I wanted to make sure it was something that I could definitely cycle the kids to school in. Stay happy, stay safe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye.